Diana Denmark here, another short video for you, another wee cookery video for you. Uh, and it's nothing complicated, it's my mum's stew, it's how we make stew in Scotland in the pressure cooker. Now I've got a, an instant pot. Uh, mum uh, has never had an instant pot but she uses her pressure cooker a lot. And when we were kids, uh, my mum used it like almost every night of the week, Monday to Friday, to get dinner on the table. Uh, my mum worked uh, for uh, Lothian Regional Council, which is, uh, it used to be, anyway, right by in the centre of Edinburgh. If, you, if you've ever been to Edinburgh at Colton Hill, my mum had offices there. And I would go and uh, see mum when she was finished work on a Friday afternoon and we'd go out and do some shopping, have coffee and cake. Anyway, uh, my mum worked uh, full time, so pressure cooker for her was a godsend. Except as the kids, whenever mum took the pressure off, you know, she'd fill up the sink with cold water. And then we'd hear that, Woo! and then we knew that dinner was soon going to be on the table. Anyway, uh, this is my mum's recipe for stew, and this is also how my, my granny would make it as well. And, and you know, uh, when I was growing up in Scotland, we, are, you know, we had like stew once a week, and also uh, mince and tatties, which is mince and potatoes. Uh, or my preferred thing was something that my granny made, which was uh, mince and dough balls and potatoes. And I used to call them mince and dough boys. I don't know why. Anyway, I've, I've started without you. I've already washed my hands, got my pinny on. And you, you can skip this step for the stew. Uh, I, I, I put it on. So I don't know if you can see much here because it's really, really sunny today. I've put the, um, the blind over the, the overhead window. Uh, I switched my, my instant pot. Let me see. Uh, I put it onto the saute function. Get it nice and hot, a wee splash of oil or whatever you like to use, and then I brown my meat first. You can skip that step if you like. Uh, and I think, you know, because the Instant Pot is so easy, um, it, it takes like a minute while I'm, I'm prepping the other uh, ingredients. Anyway, the, the meat is in there, and I'll put a picture here. I used um, what we would call stewing steak, not expensive steak. Uh, in Denmark, it's called oxo bow or oxo clump. You're looking for anything really cheap beef that is meant to be stewed, you know, for a long time, like you know, as if you were using it in the crock pot or doing it in the oven uh, for a couple of hours on, or on the stove for a couple of hours. This is why I, I really like using the, the uh, instant pot for this because it gives it a really good flavour really fast. It, it, it takes about 30 minutes um, when it's cooking at pressure. Anyway, my meat is in and I'm just kind of going to scrape the bits off the bottom. I've, I've browned the meat and then I'm going to add in some ingredients and it's, su as usual, it's super simple. You know, I love these uh, simple but tasty recipes. So I've got the beef in there and I'll just leave it on the sauté function just now. And then I'm adding, as always in Scottish recipes, you've always got an onion. And all I've done is I've um, peeled the onion and cut it into quarters. I'm not even bothering to um, take the little boats apart. So those are going in. Bum, bum. Get all that in. Uh, and the amount of meat, I've got about six, 700 grams of meat in here. Um, that, what, there are quite a few big bones in there, but that, that's good for the flavour, but the meat will fall off the bone uh, once it's cooked. Um, I'm not sure what that is in Panjong, you'll need to, to Google it, but as I say, I've got about 600, 600 grams, 700 grams, but that's including big bones. Right, and then I just give it a wee uh, stir around, hold on, let me see if you can see what's in there, boom, boom, there we are. And then I'm going to add... Uh, what shall I add? Okay, I've got some stock, and this is just a couple of uh, beef stock cubes in, let me see, in a pint, uh, a pint of water. So it, it's like, uh, what's that in cups? I'll tell you in American. Uh, two cups of water, uh, or 500 mils if you're using that, or a pint. So I'm just going to add that, there we go. Then I'm going to add uh, a tin of tomatoes, or mum would sometimes use, 
you know, some, uh, tomato paste or where, whatever you've got. It, it doesn't, it's not really going to change much in this dish. And then you can add uh, salt and pepper. Let's do that right now. And as I've said before, I don't like to add too much at the beginning. I prefer to salt my food afterwards. So that's the salt in. But lots of nice pepper. And my dad loved uh, freshly ground black pepper. And he peppered and everything. Yeah. And he also liked salt, my dad. Okay, so I've got plenty in there. There we go. That's how it's looking just now. And then what you can do is um, add in a wee uh, splash of uh, Worcester sauce. I, I know there's various ways of pronouncing it, but in, in Scotland we say Worcester sauce, like Bertie Worcester. Worcestershire sauce, but we call it Worcester sauce. I'm going to get a wee splash in there just to boost the flavour a wee bit. And then you can add, you know, if you've got some fresh herbs, um, or dried herbs, and see I've got, you know, or maybe add um, a bay leaf. Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna add some uh, dried basil. I'm just gonna put in a wee, like about a teaspoon of basil. Do just put in anything that you've got. Maybe some chili flakes if you wanna uh, heat it up a bit. Okay, so hold on, let me just show you in here. There we are. So that's basically the stew. And what you could do is also put your veggies straight in there. I, I, I prefer to have my veggies cooked, or well, they're all being cooked at the same time, but when we get it to putting on the plate stage, I prefer to have my stew and then my potatoes and my carrots separate. It's up to you, you could throw everything in, but what I, um, what I use, is one of these little steamer baskets. These are the ones that you can get from Ikea. And I'm sure there are Instant Pot special ones, but the, uh, the Ikea ones are really good. And this one opens up, it's like one of these little flower steaming baskets. And you get a little uh, hook with it so that when you're taking things out afterwards, you, you know, you're not having to burn your fingers. So what, what I do is I've got, I've got my stew in there, just give it one more mix around. We are. Uh, what's the time? Oh, look at that. Well, seven minutes and I've been talking a lot, so it, take, it takes even less when, when, time to do it when I'm on my own. Uh, then I'm going to put in my little steamer basket right on top of the stew. I'm not going to force it down, I'm just going to place it on top. And then I'm going to put in some potatoes. And I can't give you the quantities for this. This is just basically in our family, we count like three potatoes each. Uh, but they're all basically the same size and I, I gave those a quick scrub and you could um, cut them in half if you want but these are quite small there we are Hold on, just show you. so that's the tatties in there we are our tatties and then on top of that I'm going to put the carrots and because we're putting them in the pressure cooker you don't need to chop them up really finely uh, I've actually done these quite small but sometimes I would do them a bit bigger but they're basically going to steam on top of the pressure cooking um, stew. So pop those in. And normally actually I would use more carrots, but that's everything I had left. So hold on a minute. I just need to add that to my um, list, my shopping list. Right, <laughs> add it to the list on the end of the, uh, on the, the, end of the fridge because uh, with me I think, oh yeah, I need to buy carrots. And then two seconds later it's got... Anyway, so I've got the stew... And then the potatoes and carrots on the top on a retrivet thing. And then I'm going to close the lid. I'm, I'm just going to uh, switch off the sauté function now. So I'll just put it to, you know, keep warm, cancel. And then we're going to put the lid on. Ha -ha -ha. And remember, enclose the vent. Because if you don't close the vent on your... Uh, on your instant pot or your pressure cooker, it's not going to work. Right, um, let me just check that I've got everything in <laughs> before I switch it on. Yep, and we've got uh, carrots, check, tomatoes, tin tomatoes, the beef, uh, herbs and spices, whatever you've got, and then on the top we've got the carrots and the potatoes. So, I mean, it's very basic, but, you know, in, in every meal that you make for your family, it doesn't need to be the fanciest meal, it's just... 
got to fill up their tummies and, and get dinner on the table. So I'm going to put it onto pressure. Let me see. Uh, pressure. Uh, and let me see. Uh, manual. And I'm going to say uh, 30 minutes. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up there. 30 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to go and do a pupa, which is pick up and put away. Oh, there we are. Now that means that it's started. And it'll take about um, three or four minutes to come up to pressure according to how hot your stock was. I'm going to leave that for 30 minutes. Uh, and while it's cooking, I'm going to do a pupa and then I'm going to do a seven minute high intensity interval app. So let me go and do that and I shall come back and show you when it's finished and how you can um, uh, thicken up the sauce when we're done. Okay, so see you in a bit. Okay, you can hear it's beeping, so it's done its 30 minutes. And as you'll know if you have um, an instant pot, you can do it two ways. You can do um, a natural pressure release, which is just leaving it, you know, for about 15 minutes. Or you can pull the vent forward. Let me just grab a, um, a wooden spoon. You can, uh, what I generally do is, if I want to do a quick pressure release, I pull this forward with a wooden spoon and I put a tea towel or something so that you don't have kind of steam going everywhere in the kitchen. So let me do that. And if you're, uh, if you don't like loud noises, you may want to turn down the volume right now. Okay, I'm giving you, give me a break. Three, two, one. There we go. There she blows. Here we are. And I'll come back to you once it's stopped steaming. Okay, I heard the little click with the valve going down. So I'll open it up. It, it, it took about four minutes to, uh, to depressurize. And let's uh, open it up and see what it looks like. Are you ready? <gasps> uh, and I can just switch it off because it, this, the, the stew, it's one of those things, it just keeps warm for about three days. <laughs> It's amazing how much heat is in the stew. Anyway, let's get the lid off. There we go. Just let's get a little bit of extra water there. And voila! You can see our carrots and potatoes in the top, and they look like they're really well cooked. Though they'll be quite mushy, but I quite like that because I like to mush it into the, the gravy of the stew. And I'll use my little lifter. Let me see if I can just move the carrots out of the uh, be careful with this because, as I said, it's really, really hot. Here we are. Take those out and put them to the side. Hot, hot. Right, now just give it a wee mix. <gasps> I'll tell you what, here, here is what it looks like before it's mixed up. Here we are. And now I'll just give it a little mix. Hold on. Now, you can see here, let me see. You can see here the bone, the bone is in there, there was a big piece of bone, hold on, can you see that? Um, but the meat is falling off it, and what, what I, sometimes I, I like to thicken up the gravy, and you can use, let me see, my, uh, you know, the, the corn flour, the, the, you can just add this, in fact I'll do that right now. Uh, you can just sprinkle in uh, maizena, which is the corn flour, which is already mixed. Or you can buy corn flour and mix up yourself with a wee bit of uh, water. But this is really um, hot right now and it just thickens up nicely. And if you want, you can also put in a wee bit of gravy colouring. I don't normally bother uh, in stew because I quite like the red colour here. But if, if you prefer a different colour, you do that. So anyway, let me just show you. I'll tell you what, if I... Going like that, can you see that? And then I'll try and get a picture later when we put it on, um, when we play up for dinner. So anyway, uh, oh, and for serving it, uh, you may want to have some extra butter, you know, um, along with your potatoes. So, I mean, the, there's plenty of good gravy in there. Uh, maybe a wee bit of uh, parsley on the top, you know. The grass, uh, like, like my son always said, why is there grass in our food? A wee bit of fresh parsley and something that we eat a lot, and, and this is something that the Danes and the Scots have in common, 
is that we love pickled beetroot. Now, pickled beetroot comes in a jar. In, in Denmark, it's called Rolbilla Iskiwer, that this is the sliced one. You can also get uh, the full beets. Uh, and, and I never bother making it myself because you, you can get this uh, really good stuff from the supermarket. So what I always like to have is some cold pickled beetroot uh, and the hot stew and I like to mash my potatoes and, and my carrots into it. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and put a picture at the end of how it looks when it's all plated up. Uh, but all I've got left to say is live long and prosper. I hope my mum's uh, stew brings you a wee bit of uh, Scottish hygge. And what was I going to say about that? Oh yeah, every, every time I mentioned to my mum um, that I had posted a recipe of hers, her, her mum, my mum's uh, minestrone soup, which has not really got anything to do with Italy, it was just something that mum made. Uh, every time I tell her that I, I, I put that recipe on YouTube and a lot of people have uh, made it and enjoyed it, she, she just thinks it's so funny that you know her very basic recipes is going out to other people. So anyway, I hope you enjoy your dinner. Um, as I say, I'll put a picture on at the end with what it looks like. And all I've got left to say is live long and prosper. And the Danish and Scottish should be with you. Keep eating those beetroots uh, and I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye for now.